Hi guys, we are here today in Oxford. Um, we're on our last day of a free phase grand mount installation. And today we're gonna to be doing our handovers and showing the customers, giving them a tour, showing them how it all works. Um, so we thought we'd invite you along to have a look. Let's take a tour. So let's talk about the specification of the system and the project and what we've got. So we've got 60 410 watt DMEG mono panels, which is a total with the 60 panels, 24.6 kilowatt system. So nice size. Um, we have four strings and those strings are 15 panels per bank, per array, if you like, um, four arrays. 15 panels per array, 60 panels in total, 24.6 kilowatt system, split into two systems, going into two inverters. Let's go and have a look how we put them together. So we've got our mounting system. So with this project, um, we are, we were under planning permitted rights and uh, we had to... So with Grand Mount, it falls under permitted development rights, which um, with this also being a conservation area, we had to liaise directly uh, with the client in the planning stage. Um, you know, uh, so Grand Mounts typically have to be a certain height for permitted development rights. And um, again, with the conservation area, what, where can it be seen from the road and surrounding properties and stuff like that. So. Uh, we liaised directly with the client, we helped them with the CAD designs, um, which then led us to the system that we've installed here, which is a GSE system. Um, now that system is flexible, it's quite versatile, we can change inclinations as we put it together, it comes flat packed. We can open it up, construct it on site, it was really easy, I think all in all it took about three days to get it together, fill it with ballast, and um, we're really happy with it. We've got the final touches to do, we're going to strap the DC up, which we've left open as we've done our testing um and otherwise yeah we've got um really good things to say about the gse mountain we'll definitely be using it again so hashtag gse if you're watching and uh yeah let's go and have a look at the inverters installing ground mounted solar panels is a great solution for property owners with a fragile shaded or small roof whereas on roof systems impact your roof warranty ground mounted solar saves you the trouble of having to drill into your roof and erect scaffolding. The biggest advantage of having ground mounted solar panels is the design flexibility they offer. Ground mounted solar panels can be installed portrait, landscape, stacked or at individual height. However, there must be adequate row spacing to prevent shading. They also offer greater control over your solar panel direction. By setting your panels at the perfect pitch and orientation, your panels can get optimal sunlight exposure, maximizing your solar generation and savings. And with the GSE system, installing a ground mounted system has never been simpler. As this type of installation is a ground level, the system is safer and easy to access, maintain and clean. This means you won't have to pay a specialist to clean your system and can easily sweep off the snow in the winter months. Plus you will receive all the same benefits as an on-roof system, including a reduced energy bill, a smaller carbon footprint, and payment for your exported energy without having to impact the aesthetics of your home. You know, with Grand Mount, it's, um... It's actually one of those things where like here in a conservation area, we were restricted to what we could do. We couldn't have panels on the roof. So if you are, you know, if you have limitations, um, depending on where you are, or even if you've just got land and simply have the room to be able to do it, it's just another alternative option for a solar installation. Um, you know, I quite like the idea of Grand Mount, especially, uh, like I say, rural, agricultural, um, if you're more out 
um, in the sticks if you like and you have got the ability to do so it's quite a, a nice alternative option rather than because you are limited in space on the roof anyway it's harder for maintenance um, you know out on the ground here it's it's well you can see we're we're right next to the module so um you know there's various ups um pros and cons if you like upsides and um i personally am a huge fan of ground mount especially with this kit um and uh, i don't think this will be the last one that we do especially when people start seeing this video so if you've got a bit of room on your land and you are looking at solar panels or you're in a conservation area and you thought you just couldn't even have the possibility of solar panels well this is not a bad option. Okay, let's go and have a look at the inverters again. <laughs> We're all done up here, Scott. We're coming down to you. Over. So, um, with this ground mount system, um, we are right out at the back of the field over there, uh, which is also where the pony lives. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Bert. We obviously have to get the cables, the DC power from the modules to our inverters, which are more local to the property. You know, we've got underground cables, uh, we've got ducting, we've got shingle, we've got uh, warning tape. Uh, you know, we had um, ground workers in, trenches were dug, all of that was put in all of the cables that we needed for our requirements were installed and everything was backfilled and to be honest i don't think it's only been a few weeks now that you can even tell that we've done that um, but it's all in and i can prove that by showing you a working system so yeah um that was a 100 meter run dc we're looking at roughly a one volt per 30 meter drop um someone will might correct me if i'm wrong there in the comments but let's have a look So um, here we have our solar hub, we're going to call it, um, which, uh, you know, is, is the central location for our inverters. It's our plant room, if you like. And, uh, you know, it was bespoke. That's, again, another upside to a ground mount system is you, you are more bespoke. You get to choose and pick where in the planning stage you're going to put all these components. I mean, you do that with... Uh, you know, a standard residential design, but um, it's just a bit more fun when you're putting in concrete foundations, right? So uh, all of this has been made bespoke for this setup. So if you zoom out and then we'll try and get it all in the image. So PV battery box padlock key. <laughs> I wonder what's inside. Okay, so um, I'm sitting on the battery because it's hard to get it all in one shot because we're limited behind the camera. <laughs> um, so here we've got our inverters. Um, we've got a hybrid inverter, which is uh, DC coupling our storage. And we've got a string inverter, which is taking our generation. Um, both are taking PV generation. Like we said, um, at the modules, we've got four arrays of 15 um, so each inverter is handling two arrays two strings um, nice balanced strings um, we've got our storage system uh, these are uh, 2.5 uh, kilowatt hour batteries so um, yeah so we've got obviously uh, four batteries one two three four we've got a BMS unit on top which is our battery management system. Um, it's a high voltage system. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, we've gone for uh, grow watt inverters and we do that because we, you know, uh, we've worked with them for a long time now. Um, in the UK, we think that, you know, they've um, got inc 
incredible tech support. We've watched them grow um, and solidify their base here, if you like. And um, it's been proven to be very helpful in supporting our customers. So uh, we certainly will continue to work with them um, with platinum installers as well. So, you know, uh, advanced installers. So, uh, you know, when we have intricate projects or bigger, bigger size, bigger scale projects, then um, we work with those guys in that design stage as well. So, um, yeah, we've gone with two grow -up inverters, grow up batteries. Uh, we've got a three phase generation meter, which is uh, clocking all of our kilowatt hours from everything. We've got a communication box, which is down here, which in there, um, if you like, um, would be sort of our Starlink, which is got datas um, coming from the home. We're transmitting all of the data through the GrowWatt servers and you know, that, you know that's all reported through the app so the customer don't have to come out here. Um, they can manage all of the energy usage, consumption and export and all of those reports are on the app and that's pretty much where we are as the standard now in the industry. Um, so if you don't have the app then you're falling behind. So if you've got solar it should be on an app. <laughs> so if you haven't, look into that because we're in the 21st century now, guys. Um, we've got a main uh, incoming supply with all of our sort of RCBOs and uh, switch, it, switch gear. Uh, we've got uh, external isolation points, um, junction boxes. We've also got a light because it's outside and it's cool if you want to look at it at night time, which you probably don't. But it's got a light if you do. I like what the team have done here. You know, they've, they've spent time on the detail. Like they put a light in for the customer because it's outside. Um, they've put a heater in so that in the winter when the battery, you know, drops below a certain temperature and loses, starts to derate its efficiency, same as the inverters, um, they can come and put the heater on. <laughs> they can keep everything working to its optimum. So. You know, our team has done a brilliant job in the detail of this project. Um, you know, it's in a lockable box. Um, you know, there's just so much detail and uh, I definitely approve this install. Great work, boys. Um, great job and uh, looking forward to seeing this again. So, um, yeah, attention to detail. That's what we do. That's why we're number one. Deed Solar. DG, let's go. Yeah, sign this one off, get on to the next one. Might show you that one as well. Come on, let's go and have a look. <laughs> so we've got our duct in, our, uh, you know, containment, which is housing all of our different cables that come from the house, which go out to the modules, to the inverters, um, all underground, which you can't even see that we've been here, really. There are areas that you will see um, because they're having uh, still building works done. So there's still some bits to go under, but it gives us a bit of an insight as to what, what we've done. There are some downsides to a ground mounted insulation also. First of all, costs. Where ground mounted solar panel systems tend to be much larger, they are easier to expand on, but usually more expensive especially because of the additional labour required in digging trenches and longer cable runs needed to prepare the infrastructure. Whilst they are more accessible for easy maintenance, without having to pay for scaffolding to access them, this does also mean that components are easier to steal, especially if the land is easily accessible. Luckily, in this case, some precautions have been taken, for example a lock on the unit. Although ground mounted solar panels were in this case the perfect solution, they may not be viable to everyone, as not all of us are fortunate enough to have large amount of free space. When you choose to install on roof solar panels, you are using space which otherwise wouldn't be occupied. However, ground mounted solar panels take up land which could be used for other things such as farmland which makes many question their ecological impact. Right, okay, that's it for us today, guys. Remember, if you're thinking about going green, if you're thinking about solar panels, if you're limited in roof space, if you're in a conservation area, 
any limitations at all, if you just don't even know where to start, give us a call, we'll help you design it. An amazing system again. Um, yeah, you know, let's go. Let's do it again. I love it. Woohoo! <laughs> They've even got an electric fence to protect Bert from going to the solar panels. Not for you, Bert. Not for you, mate. These are our panels. All right, Bert. Don't. <laughs> Joking. Electric fence. Who'd have thought?